young small small girls on the streets doing hookups, doing runs, doing prostitutions. 15 years, 20 years. Mama they they for house, they call her for phone for I I I I employed I once employed a, a girl, a young girl I was trying to assist one time. Uh and this kitchen man he ran away. The police came to carry dead body. This is it from the house. Alright, this happened in Bonsak in Asaba. Alright. So hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for allowing me to grace your screen once again. I really appreciate you especially for this month of October. You guys have really supported this channel and I appreciate you for staying tuned. A big shout out to all of you. I mean old subscribers. So if you're new kindly join them by hitting the subscription button. Turn on the bell so that anytime I upload a video you will be notified. And please Please kindly like this video. This is a reaction video to a video made by another Nigerian YouTuber. Her name is Ella Chilaka. To her face, I call her sister Ella or big sis, right? Because me, I know people that are older than me and I respect, I they like to respect people, right? I have a quick disclaimer here before we get to the video. I want you guys to know that when you see me react to a YouTuber's video, positively or negatively, it has nothing to do with the person as a person. It has everything to do with the point or the action of the video of that person. Okay. I love all the YouTubers, including the ones you have seen me react to negatively or positively or collaborate with. I love everybody. I do not have hate in my heart. Just that I am not as strong as I have portrayed to you guys on here. When I feel exhausted by someone or a relationship, I quickly give up and let it go. That is it. But I do not have hate in my heart i do not harbor hate in my heart against anyone so when i'm reacting it's not like oh she's trying to gain favor or oh she hates this person no it's not like that so sister ella chilaka posted a video yesterday i saw it on the front page not because i'm not subscribed to her channel i am subscribed but sometimes because i do hustle especially this month i have been hustling hard so i barely have time to take a look at my neighbor's videos but that yesterday caught my attention and i think she titled this video god lives in ghana indeed and she talked about the parenting skills of the ghanaian parents and also she talked about the parenting skills of the nigerian parents and at some point in the video i felt she have hit the points and i don't want to let it go because sometimes our amazing viewers especially those that are not nigerians sometimes because of how brutal we are with the truth it sends a kind of mm, these people are just doing this to make their people look bad so that we will feel we are better than them. No, it's not like that. It's just that some of us are brutally honest and that is it. So Ella talked about the parenting skills of Nigerian parents, the amount of pressure mounted on a regular young person from Nigeria by their own parents. And this coincides with a video that Arisin Guameshu uploaded on his Instagram page and also coincides with a story that i recently told a friend about a nigerian mother let's take a look at ella's video first before we move on to the other parts of the video small small girls on the streets doing hookups doing runs doing prostitutions 15 years 20 years mama they they for house they call her for phone for I, I i i employed I once employed a, a girl, a young girl I was trying to assist one time. Uh, the way she, ha she said she hadn't seen her mom in five years. Okay, so this girl was, I think, in her she, she was 20 then. So apparently, she had left home since she was 15 to go and be sending money, to go and be bringing money for her mom to be taking care of the bills at home and her younger ones. She didn't care what this girl had gone through. She didn't care what she was going through. She didn't care wherever she was bringing this money from. All she knew was bring money. Nigerians, most Nigerian parents would push you to the world. Most of the time, these youths that are doing all these things just to make money, apart from the fact that they want to show up, majority of the time, pressure from their families push them into these things. And there, someone is saying parents will not take what you bring home if they don't know how you make your money. Oh, 
God lives in Ghana. Charlie, is this true in all tribes or is there a particular tribe that, do, that does this and maybe other tribes they don't mind? Kindly let me know in the comment section because this one there, it sweets my belly. Imagine if all parents, all Nigerian parents were like that. Don't you think there would have been some kind of, you know, co that consciousness would be there before any guy or girl would want to do other things to make money? If all Nigerian parents were like that. Before someone would do something nasty to make money, they would think twice. Okay, what would I tell mommy or daddy? How would I make this money? And they would reject it and, and then I would come and be spending it alone. And a situation whereby they make the money, they don't even give their parents crap. Because sometimes the, the ritualists will tell them not to spend on their family members. So you see billionaires and their mama, they suffer. <laughs> oh God. You guys, I am supposed to be crying. The last part of the video, the last few words of the Ella's video, I am supposed to be crying because <laughs> nobody know, nobody understands, but cool. It's going to come across to some people like, hey, this woman is saying that because she lives in Ghana or she does content around Ghana. It is true. <laughs> I hope he sees this video and I will share it to him so he can watch it. I recently told a friend about a family in Nigeria and he was laughing the entire time because he find it difficult to believe. And he was like, why will you even do that? Before I'll play Harrison video, let me analyze Ella's point in this video before Harrison's own that will come to back up Ella's claim. Ha, <sighs> my people. Do you know that what this woman just said is the truth? Hmm? I, I know. I may have come across to some people like self righteous and all that. And that is why I keep begging God, please, dear Lord, do not let me be in a situation where I will have to just take monies from family members or friends that I have knowledge of that this money is not clean. Because, uh, see, there's the way the hunger will wire you even if you are a born again christian you'll be tempted to touch so i always say that god please help me to be content with the little i have and also provide for me so that i can reject this evil monies this monies that i considered unrighteous not because i am righteous but at least on the last day there should be i shouldn't i mean i don't want to be guilty of this particular act yeah so there's um a certain yahoo boy somewhere that i like in my place right so i felt like the family is not aware of what he does for a living because that family is not far from my family right so that day i decided to be strong like after how many years this guy have been in the in that business for a very long time background stories he was tricked into the business okay it's not something he wanted to do originally but when he got tricked into it and then he joined it he enjoyed the money so he want to continue he want to maintain the lifestyle and i realized that the family is not aware of how he even made the money so i decided to keep quiet for a long time i thought maybe one day they will ask him how do you make your money but that question never pop up probably because he's a man so i felt like okay nobody is aware of what this boy does for a living true true or are they pretending but i can't blame them that much because this family is not on the internet they don't get to hear all these things and attitude like that is not common in my own part of Nigeria so they wouldn't know so years later I decided to go to the family and tell them about the business of their son I did that with a lot of fears in my heart okay I made sure that they're gonna be a bike or a wheelbarrow close by that we are going to use to take the mother of this guy to the hospital i believe that by the time i tell her see the business your son is into she's going to faint she will faint and i will rush her to the hospital so and then she'll be revived okay i promise you that was what i thought would happen but i was wrong i told her i told the mother see what your son does for a living have you asked him what he do for a living she said no she have not i said okay since you have not asked him this is what he does for a living and this is the consequences of what happens to the people your son defrauds. When he goes to them, collect this money, some of these people do commit suicide. They are sad. They lost the money to your son and some of them do commit suicide. So it's um, a very bad business. Though <sighs> no, she kept quiet. The woman was quiet for a very long time. 
she was sad the entire time but i expected her to do more than that i wanted her to faint so that i would rush her to the hospital and then we will call the son that just reported to her that his mother is sick and about to die and then when he comes home or calls her she will now confront him but that was not the case up to this minute that woman has not asked her son anything. She just accepted it and let it go. That's okay. It's hard. I understand. It's difficult to do that as a mother. It's a shameful thing. You don't even know how to face him and ask him and confront him, right? Fine. You would have done that if it was to be your female kids, right? I understand. So let's do it this way. Let me help you and your family plan your lives. And that way your son would repent. And she was open to learning. And I said to her, does he used to give you guys money she said mm, from time to time he do send like 10,000 naira <laughs> back in the days when he just started the year he used to send like 30 50,000 naira to the mother right but all of a sudden this guy is now like what Ella described in the video that some of them don't even spend money on their parents their mothers lives in poverty why they are millionaires that same guy graduated from being a regular yahoo boy who was a cheerful giver to a yahoo boy who no longer spend money on even his mother he was now giving her ten thousand and before he gives her the ten thousand it takes like months plenty of her complaining telling him oh i'm sick i'm that right so and i told her okay you know what we'll do we are gonna do all those ten thousand that he's giving you no even if at some point he changed his mind and start giving you more money reject it mm, you and his siblings should reject the money say no to it when he asks you why tell him you don't want to accept any monies from him again until he proved to you of his source of income the real source of income the the grill the woman said okay she's going to do that but up to this minute from time to time he sends like 10,000 naira to them this era when we talk 10,000 naira is how much for god's sake that is around seven dollars or below or maybe five dollars this is what this young man sends to his mother maybe once in three months but this guy drives one of the most exotic cars so where is the lie in this video i just want to back ella's claims in that video so that you guys will know that all the time that we come out here to talk about these issues that are bothering us are eating us up it's true especially those of us that care about our country and the reputation of our country and how it's affecting us negatively because when the judgments are coming on these guys they are not on them alone it's on everybody that brush is there robbing me robbing ella robbing everybody robbing nigerians that are working legitimately for their money robbing a regular innocent nigerian both the ones on youtube and the ones that are not on youtube a nigerian girl that will work and earn 600 cities a month in ghana and be okay with it this um image is on all of us so it's not only the yahoo guys that are suffering it so when you see us speak it's true what ella said in the video is true a few months ago i was so depressed and why my depression is because i'm nigerian sometimes i thought about why don't i just end my life let me just forget about it i'm sorry i want to apologize for those that will be offended i've thought like that why don't i just put an end to my life i mean i can't go back home and be okay because home is not that homing is not giving i'm just going back to go and do what no electricity where do i start from how do i live and that insecurity and then i'm living in another african country where i find peace but that constant reminder of being a nigerian wouldn't stop so why don't i just end it all but a big shout out to my brother kofi <laughs> A big shout out to him because he was there for me like he assured me that man you are the most amazing person i have met in my life so these things are true so i told the family to make the guy feel lonely and stop accepting money from him but they didn't do it oh i know some people will say okay where do you expect them to get money from if they don't accept from him I don't just put my mouth on issues like that if i know i'm not going to be able to be there for you i will shut up and let you be 
because I understand. But for me to go do that, it simply means I want to replace those 10, 10, 20, 30,000 naira he used to give to his mother from time to time. I, I took that place not because i have but because i felt like okay this is the way out to get this guy to denounce this nonsense this is the best way to help him to feel lonely and then he will denounce the yao yao he won't do it again he will stop defrauding people but i was wrong his family they are still taking his once in a while ten thousand from him so it's true they don't care so i told her why do you think i did it i did it because of the day that efcc will catch up with your son <laughs> and i know for sure that you guys would reach out to me because you know that my heart is behind me i have a strong mind i can feel like i get mind i'm going to be that person that they want to donate monies for to go to efcc and see the boy and follow due process to see if he can be released or not i'm saying this because on that day if you call me by the grace of god if i'm alive i pray to god that he repents before that will happen but should in case that happens count me out oh because you would say oh did you tell me because if i didn't tell them they would say did you tell us you didn't tell us so now that i've told you uncle you have done nothing about it so Ella is correct. She's right. A lot of Nigerian parents do that to their kids. And we are going to take a look at another evidence right now. Watch this. Harrison is a human rights activist based in Nigeria. And yesterday he made this post. It will shock you, right? Good afternoon. My name is Harrison Guamishu. Uh, if you live in Asaba, this video is for, for you. All right. Uh, I just want you to be careful. All right. That's all. Nothing again. The young boy was... You know, was murdered. Like they they beat him to death. Uh, this young boy was learning uh, Yahoo Yahoo. He said he was living HK. <coughs> HK is uh, where they learn how to press, like Yahoo Yahoo people. You know, uh, this young boy was living there, and then he I think he carried work or I don't know how to say it. He carried client out of the house and left the house. So the HK chairman went through him and brought him back to the house and um, they started beating him until he gave up the ghost and the HK chairman ran away. The police came to carry dead body. This is it from the house. All right. This happened in Bonsak in Asaba. All right. There was, I think about last three months, I they called my attention to a police case in, I think, uh, RRR in Asaba. And when I got there, sorry, it's not our it's a um, CP monitoring. And when I got to that office, two brothers were arrested. So they called me to intervene in the matter that they were arrested, detained for like three days, you know. When I got there, two boys were arrested. So I asked the police what happened. The police said that they got information that there are some boys smoking in that house. They bust it, they entered the house and they arrested about. 11 to 13 people from one house you know in the night and the interesting thing is that these two brothers two blood brothers were also in that house too they were in that training hk learning how to press computer um, to make money you know and uh, they now called the father of the boys to come the father said ah, come and do what that's about my sons are in calabar they are really calm that's what the school they are doing in Nasaba. The police say, Look, your parents, your, your children are in Nasaba, they live in Nasaba. For the past six months, they have been in Nasaba. The father said, No. I even sent the school fees to them about last month too, through the mother. Like the, mother the mother is away now. That these boys are in there, the boys are in school in Calabar. So, do you know what happened? The mother, their mother, got one of the cousins who reside in Nasaba. Brought, took those boys to call, call those boys to go to Asaba to live with the, the cousin to start learning how to how to press so they abandoned their school collecting school fees from their father and they were in Asaba learning uh, uh, how to press at the HK uh, office do you understand so that was how the father discovered the father was was crying I took his number, I spoke to him on the phone and said, you have to come down to Saba. 
he came down and saw his children. So what I'm trying to say is that there are abnormalities that are currently going on that will not require police to be going inside houses. Information they go to the houses to you know to get these guys out. You understand? Because this one has the murder somebody now, I think it's gonna it's gonna you know raise a lot of attention towards security agencies. In one really last week or last last month or there about last three weeks, they said that the army estate that army arrested some Yahoo people HK Lenin and handed over to the police and so that the police paraded them. You know, so in Vigna Saba, maybe a tenant house and you are seeing ten to thirteen boys inside the house and you know what they are doing. If the police come for them, you may be affected. You may be affected. So don't come and shout and say, you know. Now, the guy that beat kid, they killed a young boy in the house. And if they've come again, maybe they come to a house where they see that this kind of thing is happening in that house. They may likely read everywhere with a warrant, with a warrant. So please, landlords, before you give out the house to anybody, Please try to find out who you are giving your house to because a lot of things are happening. A whole lot of things are happening. Yet, Ghanaian landlords are being condemned, are being judged. Some Nigerians are criticizing Ghanaian landlords for refusing to rent their houses to Nigerians. Some of us, we don't know. I don't want to lie because for us to get solution for us to put an end to all that we are going through all the mess all the damaged reputation for us to revive and be respected and be accepted again as human or basically even if we don't achieve the respect and other things from the international communities we can live in peace within us in Nigeria, everything is advising people to ask questions before they rent. But that is, not, is never going to work. The only time in some part of Nigeria, like Lagos, landlords wouldn't want to rent houses to you is because you are a woman. If you are a man, it doesn't matter what you do for a living. They are ready to rent for you. So you can see, you should report to the police in Asaba if you noticed anything. Don't try it if you live in Asaba or anywhere and you see group of men in one apartment and you see group of men in Asaba, please or anywhere in nigeria i beg you do not go and report to the police <laughs> if you love your life do not go and report the best thing that you should do is pack your things request for your rent and leave that apartment leave that compound leave that building because if you go and report <laughs> and it backs fire you are going to be sorry for it because <laughs> <laughs> it's not that simple okay don't let harrison make it look easy for you move your things and move out of that place i'm begging you and i am saying this to those nigerians that might want to act according to what harrison said they should do do not try it because your life will be in danger to the landlords if you like take the advice harrison has given to you or reject it it is up to you but dear tenants do not try it mind your business if they come and arrest you you will get a lawyer that will come and vindicate you if you don't have money to rent another apartment to leave that one if you cannot refund if the landlord refused to refund your rent for you the best way to keep safe is by moving or staying there and minding your business the day they will come and raid the apartments they arrest you together with the yahoo boys somebody will come for you but should in case you want to be a good citizen and you want to report them reach out to people like harrison or very dark man let them do the reporting of those guys to the police don't do it yourself i know what i'm saying i did what i did because i could all right i didn't just go to random places to do it i did it at a place where i'm supposed to do like the story i was telling you guys about a nigerian guy whom i reported to his family i did it because it's my business so i didn't just go to random families and do that i hope you understand this is it ella is right sometimes i could see the pain 
in some Nigerians, you know, on YouTube here, I could see their pain, their frustration for being Nigerian, not because we hate our country, but because of all the things that are happening. Yet, you have other ones whose family members are the real chairman of HK coming to criticize us, condemning us. Now, did you hear what Arison said in the video before I forgot? You know, Arison said a mother, a biological mama that pushed her kids, collected school fees from papa and asked her cousin, her brother, sent her kids to her brother in another state to go and learn how to defraud human being. A mother, a mama. I mean, this is strange to me. Like this, I've heard all sort of, but this particular one, you know the usual had it been their father is not in their lives or he does not he cannot afford or the father cannot afford the school fees or he do not want to be responsible for their school fees or they basically do not have money to go to school i was okay maybe she's out of frustration now because when hunger do you <laughs> you forget christ trust me so maybe she's doing this because of that but no this mother here her kids are supposed to be in school but she would rather have them get money the fast way through defrauding other people so they have to go through training i told you guys the guy i reported to his mother when he was tricked into it right he was tricked into the business but you can't be like ah you tested and you can let it go so now look at what a mother did a mother a biological mother did to her own generation it is heartbreaking uh, and i'm done with the video so ella's video is on her channel that is ella chilaka to her face i don't call her ella i call her sis or sister ella or big sis uh -huh. i have respect okay i know <laughs> so in case you want to say ah, why are you calling her ella or if she sees this video and say ah see this double face girl you call me ella in public and call me sis privately no not like that i just want people to know who i'm talking about anyways i'm done with this video and i'll see you guys in another one Doo -doo.